call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the regular commission meeting of Wednesday, May 15th. It is 7.30 p.m. Um, and tonight, for the invocation, <laughs> our city clerk is going to um, do the invocation for us this evening. Please rise. Please, please rise. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we would like to give you thanks for all the daily blessings you bestow upon us. Please continue to watch over and protect all of our first responders and military service members during this, this, this difficult time in our nation. We also ask that you watch over our city leaders, elected officials, and administrators so they can continue to make sound decisions on behalf of our city residents. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. 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 And this evening, Mr. Pena is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam Mayor. Next item is item three, roll call. Mayor Rhonda Rodriguez. Present. Vice Mayor Luciano Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Candida Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Juan Blanes. Present. Commissioner Eric Diaz Padron. Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Next item. Next item is item four, presentation of minutes for approval for <coughs> April 17, 2019, regular commission meeting. Motion. Second. Are all in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0. Presentation of minutes of, for approval for May 1st, 2019, regular commission meeting. Motion. Second. Are all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item. Next item, item five, public comments. Is there anyone? Nobody has uh, registered to speak before you, Madam Thank Mayor. Thank you. Proceed. Item six, report of the city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the City Commission. Good evening. Um, my report is written and it was submitted late this afternoon because there, we wanted to include all the up-to-date information that our office is involved with. The first um, item on the report is Mayor Rodriguez, Marilyn Stevens from the U.S. Census and I met early this week. Um, Ms. Stevens has been invited by the mayor to attend your June 5th City Commission meeting to address the full commission on the importance of the upcoming census. It is imperative that we all put our best foot forward in educating our city residents on why the census is so important. Our goal is to ensure that we receive our fair share in revenue based on population. The census uh, also um, offers employment opportunity as well and we will be reaching out to our recreation center leaders um, and help uh, to promote jobs for our college students. So anyone you know in the community that is looking for permanent positions, college students primarily would be great. It's, um, they, they compensate their employees very nicely and they also accommodate um, candidates with flexible hours and mileage reimbursement. So. It's, it's a good program for the next year or I suspect or better. They are recruiting at this time and we're going to be using some information that Ms. Stevens left with the mayor myself on the census in terms of publications and it's gonna give us website information and a lot of statistical data that will be helpful to the city moving forward in applying for grants and getting um, statistical background and demographic background. So. Um, that's going to be an interesting presentation. The next item is the City of West Miami Recreation Center weight room. Um, this office, along with our Director of Public Works, Juan Pena, and our City Engineers met earlier this week, or late last week, regarding the initial concept for the Recreation Center um, Wellness Center. After some staff input, the City Engineers are in the process of making some final touches to the design-build concept to be presented to the Mayor and City Commission at the June 5th, correct Mr. Pena? June 5th meeting. 
um, before we go to bid. I have stressed the importance of building a structure that the city is able to sustain beyond the construction phase. This is critical for future budget, budget years. The traffic study is ongoing. That's the next item on my report is underway. There are several tra traffic counters citywide collecting data. The traffic counters will be removed by the end of this week and they will be repositioned early next week in other streets and avenues. So this is the, the phase where they're doing all the data collection, especially before the school session ends this year. The next item in my report is the Police Benevolent Association uh, contract negotiations. The city is starting negotiations early next week. Actually, we have a scheduled appointment on May 21st. These negotiations will assist us in best preparing our 2019-2020 budget projections. Negotiations cannot be disclosed as per our agreement until we have a proposal for approval and after ratification by the majority of the membership. Then the agreement will be presented to the mayor and city commission for final approval. The next item on my report on page two involves some personnel issues in the, in the city of West Miami Police Department. The city is losing personnel and going through some attrition stages added by some personnel matters at this time. We are making strides by filling full-time positions left vacant by expected resignations and retirements. The other personnel matters are being addressed by the proper agencies and in the proper uh, format. Three employees are signing on to the drop program during the next two weeks in the police department. This said, the, my office and the hmm. finance director are cons consulting with our independent auditors to ensure that the large sums of payout due to them can be paid from reserves designated funds. These payouts are in excess of $150,000 with benefits for three tenured law enforcement officers. These monies were not budgeted and per our chief of police, we were not notified that these three law enforcement officers will be entering the drop during this fiscal year. So it's something that our office has um, been dealing with with the police department administration over the last few weeks. Um, as you can imagine, this is a huge ticket item for the city's coffers. However, per our collective bargaining agreement, they are due and shall, you know, we, we shall pay these, these sums for their, the officer's accrued time before they enter the drop program. So um, we will get back to you with a formal report on the finances because it is a large ticket item on how we propose to handle these payouts. Um, and just this afternoon, we also got notice of a, a, uh, a resignation from one of our communications officers who's leaving the Miami area with her husband and she's a tenured employee. Barbara Knowles will be resigning on June 12th. So we're going through a lot of changes downstairs. Um, the next item in my report is the passport office. Again, the director of public works, Juan Pena, and I met with our city engineers. And they, in turn, met with the low bidder, the only bidder in the last round of seal bids for the passport office expansion project to see if there were any opportunities to reduce some of the line items in the bid so that we can meet our designated reserves amount, which is approximately $220,000 for this project. Uh, but that shall include all the furnishings, everything from take that project from A to Z. So uh, at the next commission meeting, there's a great, a good possibility that we will bring the bid back to you repackaged in some fashion so that we can meet our, our budget goals. Um, I emphatically, during this meeting, stress the importance of staying within the budget allocations for this, as well as other projects. The Office of Property Appraiser. The Office of Property Appraiser will be delivering the 2018 tax assessments on June 1st, 2019. These numbers will give us an idea of where West Miami is in terms of real estate and property taxes over or under last year. We expect that we will see growth in those numbers due to recent sales 
and construction. Any development under construction at this time will not be considered, um, there will not be considered in the tax rolls until they are issued what they call a TCO. That means a temporary certificate of occupancy. As you know, we have several developments, one on 67th Avenue and two on Southwest 8th Street that are, I don't believe that they will be uh, TCO'd by the magic date of June 1st. So that will probably come in next year around this time for the 2019 uh, rolls. Um, so um, I will be issuing memos moving forward that specifically address the goals of the budget and the mandatory issues that we need to address and the dates and all the compliance issues. The 20, next item on the agenda, I, I mean on my report is the 2019-2020 city budget. We held our first budget meeting with the police department this week on matters involving budget projections for next year. One of them addressed above, which is uh, the issue of manpower allocations. And uh, a memo will be issued by our office, hopefully by Friday of this week or Monday of next week, asking each department director to submit a preliminary budget no later than June 17th so that we can start preparing and collecting data for the pre preliminary budget projections. We will be reaching out to each city commissioner individually, of course, to set up meetings in the coming weeks to discuss your priorities and committee needs so that we can include them in the budget. The last item on my report is summer camp. The 2019 summer camp registration is officially underway. As of this afternoon at 6 p.m., we have 57 registered campers and we expect this number will grow over the next two weeks. We ordered a point of service machine that basically allows parents to pay with a debit or a credit card. This um, allows parents or guardians choices when it comes for payment of summer camp activities and field trips, and it's um, cleaner for accounting purposes. Um, also, it should reduce the number of NSF checks that are returned to the city, and then we have to go back and you know, talk to the parents about, um, about paying these amounts. So hopefully this is yet another, um, another small step to becoming more modern in, in terms of giving options to, to those who visit the city for a service. That concludes my report, and I am more than happy to address any questions that you may have on any of these items or anything else. Thank that you. POS machine was a long time. It's good, it's good that it's here. Yes. <laughs> that was necessary a long time ago, so I'm yes, very happy to hear that. Yes, and we will be installing this sometime early next week. Good. Okay, next, uh, any questions or comments for the <clears throat> city manager? Madam Clerk, next item. item. Item seven, report of the city attorney. I don't have a report, I just uh, simply have a request. Um, the uh, clerk of the city of West Miami uh, is mandated to have the packages for the uh, uh, commission meetings on a Friday before the Wednesday that we're supposed to meet. Uh, I would request a formal policy by the city commission that any uh, uh, request for resolutions or ordinances uh, that is required, unless it's in a special need, uh, to give the city attorney five working days before the uh, uh, petition is made. In other words, uh, give me five working days before you ask me for a uh, uh, for the preparation of a resolution or an ordinance. Okay. Any concerns with that? Any okay with questions? Me. Okay. What do you I need? Just an an okay from from everyone, or do you need a res how, how do you want us to? No, no, I just, I just need a, a, to inform it that this is my request, okay? Okay. Okay. Did you have something, Madam Mayor? Um, yes, Madam Mayor. I would recommend that we put that in a form of written administrative order for the clerk to follow um, okay. for the future, and that way if any commissioner requests to have something, you know, short of the five-day window that Mr. Villalobos is requesting, we have something to go back to that refers 
uh, as to your okay or consent with this request dated today's meeting. So, Mr. Attorney, what you're saying, just to be sure I understand, before asking you for something, we need, I mean, when we ask you for something, you need five days before you- Five working days. Five working days to yes. have it prepared. Right. Okay. This Very will good. not only ease the burden on the city commission, but the burden on me and also the city uh, clerk because it's very difficult for the city clerk. It's, it's quite a job to create a, uh, a package a, a, uh, for a commission meeting. So uh, to come at the last time and say, uh, well, uh, amend this, amend that, it's very difficult. I think that's consuming. reasonable, very reasonable. Okay. Now, do we not have that in place already, or no? There's no, no, no but there was no policy know, uh, in place, or it, no? It's been off and on. Off and on, okay, so. Right. We just wanted uh, to, to have it uh, official. What you have is, if I may, a four-day rule for the submittal of the agenda. And this is no, following- five, five days for the city no, attorney. No, the five days are for him, right. for the city attorney to prepare an ordinance or a resolution as it may be requested by any member of the city commission. Except that a, there's an emergency, of, of course, course, I'll be able to course. do whatever. Of course, is there anyone opposed to this? Okay, so be it. Okay, uh, thank you. Administrative order, Madam Clerk? We'll put something together the, for mm -hmm. the sure. next meeting. Thank you. Yes. Next item. Item eight, report of the city engineers, none this evening. Item nine, committee reports, report of the mayor. Any committee reports? I do have a report, uh, Madam Clerk, thank you. Um, I will be going, attending an award ceremony on June the 4th for the Sylvania Heights graduating fifth grade, where we present them certificates from the city of West Miami. I think we call them certificates of completion, right, Madam Clerk? I've, what do we call those certificates that we give the graduating class? Of academic completion. Something academic completion. So it was just brought to my attention yesterday that Sylvania Heights is celebrating their 75th anniversary. I was kind of like shocked to hear that. I didn't realize it had been that long. So with your permission and approval, I would like to request a proclamation to give to the school on the day that I'm there um, at the awards ceremony for their 75th anniversary. Agree. Agree? Agree. Anyone opposed? Madam Clerk, I'll get with you on that um, tomorrow then. Okay. So I can have it for the June 4th awards presentation. Okay. Proclamation celebrating the 75th, 75th anniversary. anniversary. I'll get the exact yeah. wording from them yeah. and then I'll get with you on it. Okay, Madam Mayor. Um, oh, also one more thing. I invite you all to go into our um, commission office, and there you're going to see a beautiful seal and, or plaque. I'm going to call it seal slash plaque that Chief Downey gave us on his last day of official business. He came by here and gave us a beautiful seal. So please go into the office and, and see it. You, you'll appreciate it very much, Commissioner. It's really very nice. And on the same day, we gave him back his broken leg a uh, firefighter <laughs> we, 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 uh, <laughs> we, we took the, the the firefighter to um to the hospital and got it fixed all up so i presented it to him again that day he was very very happy but it, it is a beautiful seal so i welcome you to go into the office and see it and that is all i have for my report thank you thank next you. item item 10 unfinished business Item 10A, follow-up FEMA, Hurricane Irma reimbursement, Office of the City Manager. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the City Commission. Um, my office, along with the Finance Director and Mr. Pena, were involved in the what they call the RTM meeting with FEMA. We are done as far as the federal level is concerned. Um, we have fully documented all of our projects. They have been accepted by FEMA. FEMA has already sent the money to the state of Florida, to the Department of Emergency Management. Um, I've been emailing a lady by the name of Amanda Campton. I'm sure you've seen some of the emails over time regarding our re request for reimbursement of the federal share of all of our projects. We went through what they called a recovery transition meeting, and that basically concluded and we were basically given a lot of um, high fives, if you would, over the phone as to how well we have done compared to other municipalities because everyone is lagging on getting their reimbursements by FEMA. 
And so we have, we're pretty much at the top of the list of municipalities that have been cleared with their federal share and now have to deal with the state. So I think we're getting closer. Now the effort is, um, I, I think, and the pressure is going to be on the part of the state to reimburse us. The state has um, hired an agency or a third party administrator, if you would, and I think you have seen some of the memos or emails, uh, KPMG, and that is the agency or the, the company that is now screening everything that we have documented that FEMA has already paid the state. They are going through the state process of scrutinizing everything. We signed amendment number five to the contract. We overnighted it to the state, so we have not missed a beat on our end. Like I said, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, now the pressure is going to shift onto the state instead of the federal government. So we're hoping that the director of, of emergency of the federal, the FEMA office, the um, emer state emergency management office will respond um, to our uh, critical need to, to be reimbursed so that we can pay the credit line in full. The credit line is now expiring on September 30th, as I reported at the last meeting, and it is our intent to, to pursue payment uh, before then. Thank you. What the manager failed to tell you is that uh, she told the uh, person that was talking to her to keep the high five giving me the money. That's oh, right. I was just going to ask you. Thank so you. this is all great. When is when are we going Show to see the money? Show me the money. money. That's have, exactly what I, I asked. Mean, do you have any, have they given you any they, idea about The only timeline? thing I can tell you is that they have already sent, the federal government has released the money to the state. So it's sitting somewhere in Tallahassee in okay. the Dep Department of uh, Emergency Management. Thank you. Commissioner, maybe you have to take a trip up there and go get our money. Huh? You might have to take a trip to Tallahassee and go get our money. What He'll do you think? go well, tomorrow. We, have to, we, send a, we send a chief of police. Uh, Mr. Pena, Madam Manager, thank you. I know you've worked, both of you, tirelessly submitting and resubmitting. Every time they ask you for something that you've already submitted, you submit it again. So thank you for staying on top of this, and I'm very happy here. We're getting a little bit closer. Thank you. And we've learned this, uh, these two portals, if they call them, we've, we've uh, actually mastered the grants portal and the P Florida PA website. But I guarantee you, if there's another storm, they'll probably change the of software course. on us again. To, of course. So, of course. But we are going to diligently now use every means of communication that we have to stay on top of the state so that they can release this money. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions for the manager, Mr. Penn, on this? No? Okay. Madam Clerk, next item. Item 10B. This is a follow-up on water sewer owner, tenant, and customer deposits to include revised do's and don'ts in the revisions of the city's welcome packet. This was requested by Commissioner Blanis, report <coughs> by the Office of the City Manager, amendments to be submitted by the city attorney, do's and don'ts, Office of the City Manager. We're going to table table this, right? Yes, please. Um, I requested um, from from Mr. Blanes uh, an opportunity to see if we could defer the do's and don'ts, the how we're going to handle the do's and don'ts portion of the welcome packet, and how we we propose that we be become more uh, or most effective in letting our our new owners and or tenants become aware of the city's ordinances and you know the things that, that they need to look out for that they need to abide by very well so, so deferred indefinitely yes. or deferred until time certain next meeting ne next so meeting table for next meeting yes okay. perfect we are including for the record the do's and don'ts in the welcome packets i i think you've all been in, in the conference room and they're they're being distributed we're doing the best we can to get the attention of, of the new tenants, okay. but I think we need to develop something a little bit more, um, call it, uh, be more communicative um, in terms of sending the message or giving the message verbally to, to the new owners and tenants that come. Perfect, so next meeting on that one. Please. All right, great. Thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Yes, item 11 under new business agenda items, item 11A, this is a public hearing Property address 1401-1411 Southwest 66th Avenue, West Miami, Florida, 
33144, special use permit 2019-001, applicant Casillas Custom Homes LLC. Applicant requests a special use permit for plan development for the property at 1401, 1411 Southwest 66th Avenue. There is a Scrivener's error. Uh, West Miami, Florida, 32144. The property is zoned for R2 duplex, and the applicant is requesting to redevelop the property for the construction of a new two-family, two-story duplex. Special use permit for index number 2019-002, zone so ordinance 282, section 2B1. Do you wish to read the resolution at this time? Yes, if the mayor allows me, Madam Mayor. Yes, please. Yes, item B. Resolution of the City of West Miami City Commission, City of West Miami, Florida, for site plan approval of special use permit for plan development, uh, 2019 for Casillas Custom Homes, LLC, 1401-1411, Southwest 66th Avenue, West Miami, Florida, 32144. Requirements for development of certain lands in the city of West Miami and requiring complete development of all land and in lieu of the rough, requiring certain improvements, dedications, and other terms and conditions subject to approval of approval by Miami-Dade and all, any other regulatory agency, mayor and city commission. That's another script and there is only one approval. Only one. It's a super approval. <laughs> Subject to approval of the city of West Miami. Miami. By Miami-Dade County. And Miami-Dade and County. And Miami-Dade County. Miami County. Corrected. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. On April 23rd, the Planning and Zoning Board had a hearing for this special use permit, at which point uh, the owner presented the proposal for a duplex. Uh, this property, I don't know if you're all familiar with it, there used to be a house there back in the 80s, a uh, single family home. Eventually it got torn down over the years and nothing was built on it for a while. And now Mr. Casillas has decided to build a uh, two-story duplex on it. Uh, the zoning board heard it. Uh, they, the plans that you have in front of you uh, show the, the elevations and uh, the proposed uh, site plan. Uh, their only request at that time at the zoning board was that the front page of the plans be improved as to showing the actual driveway with the dimensions and also the additional landscape that's going to be added to the property. Uh, that being said, they heard the, the application and they recommended approval as presented. Uh, Mr. Casillas and his attorney are here for presentation. Good evening, Commission. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, like you just said, uh, this is a zone. Is it, Name and zone? address, please. I'm sorry? Name and I'm address. I'm sorry, Nick Felsen, the attorney for uh, Cassius Custom Homes, LLC. Uh, the area is zoned for duplexes, and he simply just wants to build a duplex. Uh, he complies with all the requirements of uh, square footage of the, uh, of the uh, property and uh, setback requirements, and um, we move for uh, the commission's approval. At this time. I, I have a question. Okay. You know you have conditions, right? You have, you have conditions with the, was when this in planning and zoning was approved, they put in conditions for this approval. You know that? You read the conditions? Um, Again, the, the only two conditions were that the plans, the original front sheet of the plans, if you look at it, the, the, drive, the, drive, the driveway and the landscaping w was like in a faint. If you go to the second page, you'll be able to see it because the, the front page is a new page. If you go to the second page, you'll see that yeah. it was in a fine uh, haze, the driveway uh, and the landscaping. Now it is more shown on the plans, indicating that whatever is shown on the plans will be built accordingly. Is this an actual picture of, or is this just your, like, logo? Is, 
you come on to the podium, please? Yes, yes. Name it. Name Good and evening. address for the record. Um, Alexander Casillas for Casillas Custom Homes. Um, that is a artist rendering done mm -hmm. by myself, just to show what it will look like in the future. Oh, so this this will be the actual. Y yes, it will be, okay, it, but it's an artist rendering. No, that's fine. That's uh -huh. fine. Okay. Perfect. So that's what we are planning to build. Um, as uh, Mr. Juan Peña had stated just a few seconds ago, uh, we complied by doing the revisions of the zoning uh, meeting uh, less than a month ago by uh, fixing, uh, improving the front cover sheet and showing clearly what the driveway will be and the dimensions of the driveway, which is 20 feet wide. So we have complied with the uh, uh, zoning remarks. But it's, it's an individual side, I um, mean, a joint party, a joint party agreement, right? Suggesting the property, if ever sold as an individual side, for the exterior maintenance of the property. Correct. If, if, if it's one of the conditions. That's what I ask you. That's do, correct. Do at they know? Yes. At this point, he's... They don't answer. Do they know that you have the conditions? At this point, he's keeping the property. That's in case it ever sells. No, but I'm asking the applicants. Do they know? Did they read these conditions? Yes, we have read the conditions. Yes, we have. So have. that's what I ask you. You know that you have on the impact windows and this, and especially this. This is very important because in the case, in the future, this can be sold separately. Have to be a, a joint, uh, have to be a, a party agreement um, in order to keep the exterior in the same condition. The aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic appearance must be kept um, in all exterior and they both have to be in accordance. We understand. Do they have this party? Agreement? Yes, we do. Okay, and your, party, your partner knows too? Uh, I'm the attorney. Uh, oh, do you know this? <laughs> I, I was not aware of that. But you, his attorney? Yes. Um, so you want a copy of this to read it? Uh, sure. Yes, please. Because they, 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 he doesn't know about this one. And he's the attorney. I don't have any. <laughs> I, saw that, I saw that was zoned uh, for duplexes. I wasn't aware of But that. this is very important, you know, in the future. A joint party agreement and suggested the property, if ever sold as an individual site for exterior maintenance of the property. This is very important. Because practically it's a duplex, but practically it's a two, home, two houses, two homes. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. So this is very important in the future. Thank you. What do they line in the in the second paragraph? This is fairly standard language when it comes to duplexes, right? This is a standard private covenant. Well, I guess in this case. Well, right and if it, it's standard, but I I, I want to know. To be sure that they know. Thank you, Commissioner. So, Mr. Attorney, Mr. Casillas, you're you're good. Mr. Attorney, you're you're good. Uh, yeah, he said he's okay. he's okay with the conditions. Uh, okay. What well, <clears throat> I just want for the record that. You are aware of these conditions, we the are approval. Aware. Yes, we are aware. And this and will be agree. written. This will be written in our papers. So in the future, in the city record, will be this condition. We understand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pena. Anything else? No. That's no. Any other questions from the table for the Mr. Casillas or his legal counsel? Any other questions? Okay. So, Madam Clerk, at this time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Public hearing is open. Do we have anyone to speak on this? No, Madam Mayor. I have a question, if I yes, may, after yes, you all discuss it. Uh, well, let me close the public. Is this during the public hearing time, or I'll close it and you can ask your question? Uh, wh whatever format. After you close it, Very after good. you close it. Public hearing closed, Madam Manager. Close. Thank you. My question is uh, to Mr. Pena, if I may, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Pena, are we collecting sewer connection fees for these two properties? Yes. The same ones that are on the ordinance that were charged to everybody? All impact fees. That All impact fees. Impact fees and sewer connection fees, right? All impact fees. Okay, great. 
Thank you. That's my question. Mr. Casillas, how long, when do you think this project um, will be completed, more or less? Um, if all goes well, we'll be submitting plans, construction documents in the next two to three weeks. Uh, it'll depend on how long uh, we get approval mm -hmm. at those weeks. And uh, I should take about six to seven months to build. So if all goes well, we should be able to uh, finish complete home in about eight to nine months. And these homes will be for sale? Um, or my, my, the ideal plan is for me to keep one uh -huh. and to sell the other one, okay. yes. Uh, but I am not uh, compromising myself to not selling both of them. Of course. But I am planning on living one, Very living well. in one. Very well. well, hopefully we, we will welcome you to West Miami when you um, live in your I town. Got, <laughs> it's, a, a, it's like a, a hidden secret. I mean, it's a great Shh, city. Don't tell too many it, people. <laughs> it's beautiful. We try to keep it quiet. It's beautiful. We love it here. Well, Thank welcome. You. Welcome to the city of West Miami. Anything else? Mayor, I just want yes. to uh, add uh, that this application was approved for all the members in the Planning and Zoning Board. Correct. Yes. And yes. it's recommended to approve. Yes. And it's a beautiful uh, yes. house. So I make a motion to approve. Let's take a Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Yes. Commissioner Blanes, at your vote. Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron. Yes. Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez. Yes. Mayor Rodriguez. Yes. Five zero. Item passes. Congratulations, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Welcome. Mr. Attorney, do you have a card, uh, yes, business sir. card? Sure. Thank you. It's just for the record. So when I do the minutes, I have sure. your information. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, next item, Madam Clerk. Yes, item 11C. This is a second reading, a public hearing, an ordinance of the Mayor and City Commission of the City of West Miami, Florida, requiring <coughs> an independent traffic study by the City of West Miami for certain new real estate developments, creating a pool of providers to conduct said study and select it on a competitive basis, <coughs> authorizing the City Manager to select qualified independent providers to conduct an independent traffic impact study for new real estate developments, providing for a competitive process, providing for a selection process, providing that the cost of the traffic impact study be borne of the applicant requiring said study, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. This item is sponsored by Commissioner Diaz Padron. Commissioner? Sure. This. Um, this proposal was born from, uh, from listening to residents for a long time, um, especially in the past couple of years when we've, we've been dealing with development for the first time in a long time. And it's not unique to our city, it's happening everywhere. But there's a perception sometimes that's created that there's a, uh, there's bias be between the, in traffic impact studies with developers. Now, the bias is not necessarily real, but there's a real perception of bias. Um, so what this proposal does is it, it creates a more transparent process where there is a elimination of perception of bias between the traffic uh, impact consultant and the developer. All it does, it doesn't, it doesn't change when a traffic impact study is triggered, but it does uh, change how the developer interacts with the uh, consultant. I think the attorney want to say something. Not really. I mean, this is something that uh, would uh, create transparency and uh, would uh, prevent any sort of collusion. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, the ordinance, uh, we don't have that in the books. So uh, it's, it's something that uh, perhaps it would benefit the city. Right. And let me just add, I've, I worked for a long time with the city attorney and the city manager to make sure that the residents are protected at every point of this, including um, financially, so that we, we aren't stuck in the middle of a project that goes dead and, and we can't pay for the traffic study because we're, we're paying for it from the developer's money who then pays the city. So there's no interaction between the, the engineer or the consultant and the developer. It's always good to avoid collusion. Okay, so yes, go ahead. Makes all the sense in the world. I'm sorry? I, I said it makes all the sense in the world. I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> I, I know that we ha we've had some moments here in the past and there's been some contention about the traffic study 
and if it's you know and if it's so what they're saying so you know now this uh, I think it will add you know uh, a certain level of, uh, of transparency that is not just uh, uh, a, a, a company that is brought in by the developer so yeah I, I, think I make a motion what, I think Mr. Pena, you had your hand up. <laughs> Madam Please. Mayor, this is a public hearing. Yes. So Mr. Pena will speak and I'll open the public hearing. Madam Mayor, Commissioners, uh, although I agree with your transparency, uh, this does generate expense because we now have to put a RFQ together along with the help of T.Y. Lynn to go out and solicit traffic companies to come and bid as, uh, as far as their qualifications and then rank them in order to to have that list prepared for the developer when he comes with a, a development proposal and at that point we will rank them and give them the 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 alternative number that they will be uh, given once a project is presented in other words to to tell them this is the company you're selecting uh, through us and at that point from what I understand we are to pay the developer I mean the traffic company and then the traffic company the developer has to reimburse us correct, uh, that correct? no it's um, it's before the commencement of any traffic study there is they, they are to pay it in full to the city so yes, made a pause. well and mr. Renner how how often will we have to do this each and every time? Each and every time a developer comes for uh, a project that triggers the, the traffic study. So we do have to, uh, by the commissioner's request, we will have to have a list of companies that are available for traffic studies and ranked by the city. That will require, like I said, the assistance of our, t of our engineers to go ahead and uh, generate a request for proposals. And that cost would not be paid for by the developer. That would be no. Paid. That would be paid that would by, be us. by us. May and I? Well, if I could just get more or less, do we off the top of your head, what that cost would be? I don't know. The last uh, request for proposals that we we solicited from our engineers was about twenty thousand dollars to go out for the uh, preparing of the documents. For the prep, I don't know what it would cost for a Which traffic it, study, right, but, but that's what it ended up being for the recreation center for the recreation right. center. However, this is for a limited purpose, an, an RFQ for a limited purpose. It may not be that much, but there will be to initiate the, the, the project or, or the, um, to, to be able to enforce the ordinance, we're gonna have some setup costs and we're gonna have to include those in the budget moving forward. If we have an application between now and October 1st, we have to absorb the costs, and, and if this ordinance passes, we have to direct our city engineers to sit down and prepare a complete set of specification and contract documents so that we can advertise it and go out for a request for qualifications, that's what it's called. Then we're going to have to develop, and I have some thoughts in mind on how we can develop a committee, a selection committee, to go through the candidates or the firms that do respond to the bid. So we have some advertising costs and we're, we will have some costs associated with initiating the process to comply with the terms and conditions of the ordinance. Moving forward, once you have selected and ranked these firms, we have, they will, I, I guess if it's, if I understand the ordinance and the concept, Correctly, Commissioner Diaz Padron, I suspect that we will be uh, assigning these firms on a rotation basis. They will, we will pay them, but before they get a building permit, they must pay the city 100%, and that's what I understand. These contracts are not being rebid every time there's a special use permit application. This is not. Right. This it's a one-time. It doesn't time. get continuously rebid. It's, it's, a, it's a pool. Correct. It's a pool like, like we have now in our current one. Which, by the way, I, I don't know when that one was bid out, but that's due to be bid out anyway. So this just does that already. May I? Please. Um, 
I have been serving the Miami-Dade County as a bond counsel for many years. Uh, I'm not doing that right now, but uh, the way that the county did it, uh, it's very simple. Uh, the application is only once. I'm sorry, the RFQ is only once. Uh, there is a selection of a pool, that uh, means a three or four, and uh, it's in a rotating basis. In other words, every time that you need a traffic study, you are not going to have to go out to bid again. Correct. So right. you go right. out to bid only once, and all ordinances have a cost. So uh, every time that you have an ordinance, you have to uh, have a publication cost. So, uh, this is the cost is uh, it's not going to be any different. It's just the creation of the RQ. So, Mr. Brennan, you're saying there's a minimal cost, but I'm hearing something different from Mr. Penna. Mm -hmm. I need clarification. Minimal cost. I'm hearing two different things. Mr. Uh, for publications. Uh, Biello is, is referring to is for the publication. Mm -hmm. The actual um, uh, RFQ proposal mm -hmm. requires specifications. It, and they, they have to break it down by number of units that you know, uh, the building's going to have. Uh, the amount of uh, volume of uh, vehicles, where it's located, all that has to be put into the RFQ in order for someone to be able to uh, bid the project properly. And that's what you said, up to $20,000 each time? No, no, no. No. One time. One time. One time. So Just a one -time to develop cost. the list. Okay. So okay. this is like a setup. So one time, $20,000. It could be less. I don't could know. Be less. I, the I the specification and, and contract documents should include let's call them scenarios for development. Correct. And that's a one-time fee to prepare okay. that, that cost. Mm -hmm. And then under this proposal, the city would absorb that one-time fee to set up at least the enforcement component for the ordinance itself. Mm -hmm. The city would absorb that, and moving forward, any project that comes through the city uh, for planning and zoning and, and building must uh, the developer must pay the cost, 100% of the cost associated with the um, with the traffic study. Okay. And the, but the city will provide them with a a list on a rotating basis. And I think that the mission here, that or the goal here, is to be able to create a pool of companies that come to the city and create more of a transparent process and not have one company. Um, be performing all the traffic studies for all special use permits for planned development. So does that mean this? So you this can have of three a number four. of of qualified opinions, but you know different opinions by different professionals. Okay. So am I hearing this correctly? That pool of three or four that is chosen by the selection committee, that yes. is forever. It'll be covered for the next. 10 to 15 years. Until you revisit the ordinance, if, sure. if there's a, a, a need to revisit it. Right. Let me just say another. We have on the books right now, we have an ordinance that has to do with, um, we have about, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, three, is it three companies? Yes. That are, that are right now designated, allowed to uh, conduct, and that was bid, what, what year was that bid? 2004. 2004. So I, I agree with you that they should be, they should be adjusted every once in a while. That's not contemplated here, but it's I think not, that it, it is or it isn't. It is not contemplated here, but I th and it's like it wasn't contemplated in the past. But I think that in the future, or as an amendment, I don't know if the city attorney would allow it. The um, we we should we should contemplate that for a whole lot of contracts. But in, it is not contemplated in this ordinance um, a certain renewal or or rebid or any of that. So if we if if this pass it tonight it's open-ended or should, it, it, should we amend it to Un unless the Commission would like to put in like every 10 years go through this process this is why you have a public a hearing provision. tonight uh, uh, exactly on on that same note I have a question I, I, I was reading the the ordinance and mr. attorney this would be for you uh, under section 9 I'm wondering the basis for this under section 9 it says any provider that has participated within the last year in an application for any new real estate development or is currently working for an applicant on any application is hereby prohibited from participating in the pool of providers conducting the independent traffic impact study for the application. What is the basis of this, if you will? It's to pre prevent, uh, uh, if, uh, Let, Mr. Attorney. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. It's to prevent a conflict of interest. So um, essentially, 
as part of a transparent mission, uh, you, we you try to create a reasonable time frame for the developer and the and the traffic consultant to not have worked together, so that they can't have been working with them in the last 12 months, which is a reasonable, very reasonable time frame, and they can't be currently working with them with that applicant that's asking for the the permit, not any applicant anywhere. Yeah, but this would also mean that this same provider who we're not allowing to be part of the selection, be be considered, well, and in, will in, in, be, in, will in, be in prohibited for 10 years. In that rotation. No, no, in, no, no, in that rotation. One year. No, one no, year. no it, it would be in that route. Um, since since the, they're, the, the, they're pooled before the special use permits. So once, once there is an, an application, that's when they're assigned by rotation. So whoever has a conflict just can't participate in that particular project with that developer that they, they do they worked with in the past who are currently working with but they stay in the pool and they stay in the rotation they just can't work with that applicant and mr. journey we can do this let me say this I'm going to give you a, uh, an example uh, everybody has a right to appear before the County Commissioner correct yes Count, County the, Commission what the County okay. Commission yes, okay. yes. But we're talking about us, not right no, now. No, no. I mean, this is only an example. Okay. Except former county commissioners for two years. In other words, the that, reason that would be for lobbying. That applies here too. Th that applies for here too. The reason is that uh, you go and uh, revisit the rule. He who has the uh, gold makes the rule. Uh, if I work for someone that uh, needs a traffic study in the city of West Miami. And therefore, I am um, get to um, uh, make a traffic study that could potentially benefit the party that was paying me before, that would be collusion. So in order to avoid collusion, the principle is that uh, whoever has worked for a particular company, developing company, will not be able to do it in a particular time. So and that's perfectly legal. And if I, if I may add, there's, this is, um, that one-year time frame is a very reasonable time frame, but it's also identical to, to many cities that have very similar ordinances. So it's not anything new that's, that's in there, and it's, it's in there in other Florida cities, and, and it works just fine. Okay, so Mr. Attorney, Section 9 is legally sufficient. There's no, we can do this. You can do that. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anything else, Mr. Pena, Madam Manager, anything? No, I, I, if, if upon passage of the ordinance, then we have to establish a procedure but I think the way that the ordinance is, is crafted, it leaves that authority within the office of the city manager and or her or his designee. So we can establish the protocol of uh, perhaps a selection committee, how we're going to implement the ordinance. Commissioner, did you want to amend it as far as that time period? Um, absolutely, if we can add that in. Uh, I would, it's I would, your, your yeah, um, whatever you... Do you have the... Do you, do you have the amendment written, or do you want me to? No, no, just go ahead and do it. Can, I mean, we, you want to. can we add in a, a sunset provision for 10 years? 10 years. Yeah. Mr. Pena, is that agreeable with you? 10 years from June 1st, 2019, is that acceptable? Yeah. That's, that's and, yeah. and that helps us every 10 years gauge the expense associated prior to put, putting a budget together. Correct. Commissioner, 10 years works I, I, for you? I have a question. Yes, Commissioner. Now, what happened <clears throat> if some of the companies that you put in, you select in the pool, in 10 years, they, they are not in the business? They're so out. If we, if we have four companies in the pool now, and one or two disappear, then we are going to have only two? That's correct. We can add new companies? No, to keep you would four? have to go through the process again. If we get down to that, but right. my, but, 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 my question but, 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 is, wait, 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 one at a time, please, one at a time, wait, wait, wait. one at a time. My Finish question is, if, in this concept, said, well, the pool are going to be four companies, right, below us? Whatever you want. Uh, okay, whatever you're the counselor. We said five companies in the pool, all right, for 10 years. Hopefully. Number one, number three, and number five disappear. Now we are going to uh, be number two and number three, the rest of the years. My question is, can we replace, if one company disappeared to keep the five that we approve in the, in, in the, in the, in the first moment? For the pool, if we approve a pool of five, can we keep the five in the pool? You have 
You would I didn't want to know if they say, you want to disappear. You would need to go through the same uh, Selection process. RFQ process again in order to build it back up to five. Right. <clears throat> but that's my question. That, that is correct. Uh, you're totally correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Commissioner You're totally correct. Because I'd like to amend something that if we, make a, we decide to make a pool of five companies, if one disappear or two, try to put it replace so we keep the number five companies in the pool to make a selection so we have more variety. Yes. Because if the other disappears in eight or nine years, there will be only one at the end of the, the years. So I think we should replace if one disappear, get another one. If you decide your idea in your ordinance is to have a pool of five? Well, it hasn't been stated. That, 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 that was left stated. open. That was left open. Again, the, oh. the, 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 it just, uh, the size it, of your pool is going to be depending on the amount of people that bid and qualify. So, right. we, so we may have five, we may have three. So it all depends. So the pool will be only with the companies. When you open this, the people who come to, to the city. Correct. If let the me, people who come to the city are let three, let will be three. Let, let me suggest something. You mm -hmm. see, the thing is this. You cannot say, I'm going to have a pool of five. You what? have a pool. No, you know, no. Whoever is approved. That'll be up to the selection committee. You have a pool. You, you don't need to say, I have a pool of five. You can have a pool of two. Because the county, as a matter of fact, as I said, the reason that I mentioned that I was uh, uh, bond counsel of the uh, Miami-Dade County, is that uh, they have a pool of three, and there's one that left, so they have a pool of two. <coughs> so no. they get, it's, there's nothing wrong about that. Okay, now this is clarifying now. To, in order to have the pool that commissioners uh, Diaz Padron mentioned, the city asks for the people who come to apply. And according with the people who come to apply, the vendors, three vendors, so the pool will be three. Four vendors, so the pool will be according with the number of vendors that come. Qualified. Not, Qualified. Qualified people. Qualified. The vendor qualified. qualified. Once we review them, All then right. we create and the then program. And then it's a period for qualified people, vendors, right? Yes. Or say, at the end of the period, we will have we have three qualified. Okay? Now the, th the pool will be three. My suggestion is if in the 10 years period, which is a long time, one of these three qualifiers disappear. Try to qualify another one, new one. If 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 the if the if the vendor apply to keep the pool of three, I mean, if the idea is to have a pool, to have a variety. Correct, but when when you do that, commissioner, vice mayor, then you have to open it up to all the companies that exist at that point again. You just can't hire one more and bring them on board. You have to open it up again. You have to close the, our pool and open another and pool. And go through another process. Okay, yeah. now you clarify the things. Yes. We have seen now the clear, the clear. Okay, uh, if, if I can ask one question, yeah. just for knowledge, um, on our current, on our current uh, traffic engineers, traffic consultants, how many of them? Since there, there are a bit of no four, how many of them are still in business? Two. Two. The one dropped. Yes. Okay. And that was that was how many years? That was fifteen. Seventeen years. Yeah, 17, 17. <coughs> Commission now, now the air is clear. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Diaz Perdon, I'm just wondering, listening to, to Vice Mayor, might it make sense if we lessen that 10 years? Or, or I'm just thinking that's. I, again, it wasn't contemplated on the original one, so I'm, I'm all ears. I mean, that's, that's up for discussion. That's. Any well, input, Mr. Pena? What? Again, I mean, 10 years is a long time, so I, 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 I'm hearing where, com, where Vice Mayor is going with that. Correct, 10 years but, is a but long traffic, time. traffic consultants are very small and few. Mm -hmm. So 10 years is not a long time to have those companies in business. And remember, if, if once you lessen to five years, say if you go five years, then we have to go through the process again of the RFQ process, mm -hmm. and that's another cost, cost. Uh, document. And okay. All right, clear enough for me. Commissioner diaz Padron, do you want to make that friendly amendment then for your for the 10 years? Um, I, I think I added it in. Um, yes, and that sounds yes. provision. And if, if anyone doesn't, if no one has any other comments, I'd like the motion as amended. Okay. Anybody else? Second? Uh, I make a motion already. Second. Okay. Mayor, you have to open the public oh, hearing. Oh, yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Public oh. hearing's open. I was so wrapped up in the conversation, I forgot. Anyone here on this item, Madam Clerk? No, Madam Mayor. Public hearing is now closed. Call the vote, please. 
We have a motion by Commissioner Blanca and second by Commissioner uh, Vice Mayor Suarez. Please okay. cla clarify. Yes, uh, yes. I make Mayor. the motion. And, okay. and then and Commissioner Second by had a, a, as a, mo as a motion as amended. As amended mm -hmm. by? It was Commissioner, Commissioner Diaz. Commissioner Diaz Padron. Padron. Okay. Right. Yeah. By adding the sunset as provision. Such a provision of 10 years. Right. Correct. So uh, and and starting on June first, twenty nineteen. Okay, had it written here. So Commissioner Blanes, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Diaz Padron. Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez. Yes. Mayor Rodriguez. Yes. Five zero. Item passes. Next item is item D eleven D. This is a second reading of public hearing. An ordinance of the City of West Miami, Florida, delegating authority to the City Administration to mitigate code enforcement liens pursuant to lien mitigation procedures established by the City of West Miami and authorizing City Administration to release such liens that have been filed against properties in the City of West Miami, providing for codification for completes, providing for surveyability, providing for an effective date. This item is sponsored by Commissioner Blanes. Commission, before you start, if you, if I may, Madam Clerk, do we read the resolution that goes along with it as well, which is I, or do we leave that as a separate item? I should say that uh, you should read the resolution afterwards. Okay. Uh, the reason is that uh, I have prepared, you know, for abundance of caution, not only the ordinance, but also the procedure okay. to be uh, followed by the city manager. Very well. So you already have it, but you have to first approve the uh, ordinance and then the resolution. Very well. Okay. And I have a question for you, uh, Mr. Attorney. This, uh, this public hearing was advertised just as it appears on the agenda, but uh, later after the publication, you made amendments to the heading of the ordinance, yes. which we have here. So at this point, is it, is it feasible to contemplate the one that you prepared after Excuse the publication? Me. I have to take a look at it because I forgot about it. Okay, let me show you. Allow me one uh, yes. minute, Madam Mayor. Yes. El heading. The wording of the first reading. Uh, thank you. Uh, the city attorney has clarified. We, we're going to go by the heading as originally was uh, published by um, by my office. So, um, as I said, this public hearing was advertised in the newspaper of general circulation, and um, and uh, you may I mean proceed, Madam Mayor. Commissioner Blanes, I believe you had. Is it all straightened out? Yes. I, as far as thank the you. city attorney and city clerk, yes. Okay. Well, basically, you know, this is something that that uh, you know I've been thinking about for a long time, and that is that you know that every time that there's a, a mitigation for uh, code enforcement violations, I feel very uncomfortable, you know, having to to mitigate uh, the fine, and you know I've always felt that it was it, it should be handled at the administrative level. I think what would be more appropriate is for us to legislate and to give the administration, you know, a uh, set of gu uh, a guideline to go by. Um, typically, w what happens, you know, when we have uh, se a severe case of code enforcement violation, is that you know you have a uh, absentee landowner or a landowner that. Uh, does not very much care about 
you know, the quality of life of its, of its neighbors, and it inflicts, you know, a, a burden on the, uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the neighbors for a very long time. So, you know, we're limited to, to, to doing what we do, and that is, you know, to cite them, to go through the, the legal procedure, and to, you know, establish a fine. And the fine is, is you know, uh, every day the fine builds up till they, uh, you know, they have a, a large amount of money that they, that they owe the city. So, so basically what happens is most of the time the property owner is only affected when he's going to sell his property. Because, you know, we put a lien on the property and now there's a lien and so now he wants to sell so he can't, he's got to get rid of the lien. So basically what happens is he basically uh, sells the property and uh, the, new prop the new property uh, owner comes before us and we usually mitigate, typically we mitigate the, uh, the, code, enforcement, the code enforcement violation. I think, and, and, and consequently, it, I'm sure every, everyone sitting here, you know, what we want is to, to definitely mitigate and to definitely get that house, you know, fixed, uh, someone living in it and, you know, squared away and uh, on the tax rolls. So, but what happens is that the property owner, the person in violation the whole time goes scot free. And and the and and you know, because he gets paid what he wants and the new property owner comes before us. So I think it should be the other way around. I think that we should legislate and legislate and have the administration uh, have a, uh, uh, a guideline to where uh, a certain percentage cannot be mitigated. In other words, if they owe X amount of money, they're gonna be responsible for X percentage of the fines and there's no, no mitigation. Now there will be a, a, a percentage that can be mitigated, but that will be handled by the administration. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, more appropriately it should be for us to, to legislate and give them the power to resolve these issues. And I think that by, <coughs> by fixing and requiring, you know, the person, the property owner in violation to have to pay a certain amount and it cannot be mitigated. Uh, Once that is known, you know, I think that we will get uh, more uh, 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 um, what do you call it? They, they will be more apt to follow the law and resolve the issue, thereby, you know, uh, improving the quality of life to all the residents. Mm -hmm. uh, do I make myself uh, clear, sorry, my colleagues? I'm sorry to, to, to interject if you allow me. The problem with that is that uh, you cannot force a property owner because uh, we cannot enforce prop, uh, liens on property owners that have homestead. In other words, you cannot force a person to just go ahead and pay anything because that would be against the Florida Constitution. I don't follow the, you. You cannot force a lien on a property owner, enforce, I'm sorry, that has a homestead. In other words, if I have homestead and I have a lien against my property, right. you cannot force me to pay anything. You, have, you cannot uh, uh, foreclose on, my, on your lien against me because I'm a, uh, I have homestead. See, what you're delegating uh, right now is the ability <laughs> to the uh, city administration to follow your guidelines and say, we're going to do it like we have done it before, providing that certain rules that must be established. And this pursuant to Florida statute, you have to take into consideration, uh, see, and that will go in the lien mitigation procedure. It says, when determining the recommended amount the city manager and or his uh, her resignee shall consider the following factors. 
This is flawed as statute. That's not our uh, doing. The gravity of the violation, action taken by the applicant to correct the violation, pre previous violation committed by the applicant, the cost of any upon application to correct the violation, whether the applicant was given reasonable time to correct violation, the current property value compared with the uh, amount of the lien, documentation of compliance uh, date is different from the original calculated, whether the property is owned, occupied, or investment property. So this is Florida statute. So well, you, we, we, we do that already, but, but, but except that instead of you doing it, the administration is going to do it. Exactly. That's, exactly. That's, that's what I would like. Right. And, and, and further, I would like to, you know, to have, to give them a guideline, uh, you know, where there is set amount that they would have to pay. In other words, there's amounts, first of all, you know, the way that we've been doing this, it's we mitigate and we make sure that we cover all the, all the cost. Madam Manager and Mr. Pena, the Code Enforcement Director says, we, hey, this cost us $5,000. So, you know, right off the bat, you know, they're gonna have to pay us at least $5,000, right? To make up for all our cost. So I think that, you know, we need to legislate a certain percentage that cannot be mitigated. I don't know what that percentage would be, I think that, you know, it should be up to the administration, you know, one that would definitely cover all our costs, but one that, you know, they would have to pay and it could not be mitigated. Again, I don't know if there could be like a sliding scale to take under consideration what the attorney said uh, with all those points that he brought up, especially the amount of the fine and the amount of what the property is worth. Maybe there can be some kind of sliding scale. That, I'll give that you two examples, projected. if I may. Number one, uh, for instance, assuming that a corporation owns a property, you could, could, flow, could uh, foreclose on that property, okay, because it's not a homestead. You cannot give homestead to a corporation, okay? But assuming that you have leaned a property who has homestead, that you cannot foreclose because it has homestead, okay? And then comes a new owner, totally innocent, about what happened before. He comes and purchases a property. The question is this, is it fair to tax the new property owner with the bad deeds of the former property owner? And that's why you have been taken into consideration in the past. Ca caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware. He's buying and he knows what, what the issue is. Then what will happen then is, is you know, uh, you know, capitalism will kick in, supply and demand. You know what? He's not going to be able to sell the house for a hundred thousand dollars. He will sell it for seventy. And then the new property owner will pay the fine. And I, I and don't think that you could do impose a, a fine on someone that has not uh, violated the law, uh, Mr. Commissioner. But he's, it happens all the time. The new owner comes well, here and he pays for, uh, he mitigates whatever the fine is. We mitigate it, but as I say, you cannot treat the same a person that has violated the law as someone that innocently buys in. So we have mitigated more the person that has buyer beware, purchase a property, and comes out before you to well, mitigate it. Before you buy a property, you know, usually hire an attorney, and they, and they do a... Um, lean search. A lean search. And, and we they, disclose. And they, everything is what the law is, how it applies, what they're responsible for. So at that time, you know, the attorney of the buyers can say, listen, this guy owes $10,000. And he is got to, you know, if you buy the, if you buy the property, you're, you're going to be on the hook for $10,000. So, you know, at that point, the price will be negotiated. Minus $10,000 or whatever it, it, the fine is. It's totally is. up to you, but you see, we have advertised a particular mm -hmm. heading. We cannot change the purpose of the ordinance at the second reading. Uh, the I issue. I was I was under the impression that 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 we were that that 
that we could actually do this with this ordinance, that we could act, that there would be a certain percentage that would be, that the violator would be responsible for? Well, as I say, we advertised, and it came out before you in the first reading. And when it first to, it came to, to the first reading, nothing was said because there's no discussion. But since you can call, the commissioners can call, any commissioner can call, and say, well, this is not what I want. Let's go ahead and amend the heading before we publish it. You see? Now, if you want to say in the heading of the ordinance, well, there shall be a minimum payment of whatever. Uh, I, I assumed, I apologize. Okay. I, in my head, I assumed that that, that was something that was in there. I, the uh, percentage. Yeah. And I, would you I read stand, the ordinance again? I stand corrected. Well, you know what? Now that we brought, now that I bring this up, I, I think maybe it would, would it be proper for us to discuss Absolutely. this at this time? Well, it's a second reading, so this is when the discussion would take place. It's a public hearing. You public have to hearing. amend it and uh, publish it again. I, I thought this this ordinance only transferred the the power, the mitigating power, to the administration, and the administration can then set those whatever guidelines it wants to the mitigation, right? The commissioner is totally right. So totally correct. We could we could technically do this and then and the administration contemplate that later with whatever advice they want to take. But the, it would be totally up to the so administration. So you're going to approve that subsequent to you, the main purpose of this ordinance is not to set standards of collection. It's just the main purpose of this ordinance is to transfer authority to the city manager. Now, the resolution that is going to come afterwards sets forth the guidelines. The process. So, as I say, d please don't amend the ordinance. Transfer the authority to the manager. And then if you want to, in the resolution, you can instruct the manager to do whatever you want. OK, that okay. makes sense. Okay? So, so let's this, is this second reading is just to pass the authority right. from the table to the city manager. Right. I, I do have one concern on it, though, just very brief. Are you, Mr. Um, Commissioner, you, Commissioner, um, the, the, my only concern is that since we're the body giving the giving the fine, right? Since the administration is the body giving the fine, and they're they're the arbiter and the executor of it, of the mitigation. Is there an, is there some sort of appeals process we can interject in there? I mean, I don't. I believe it does say in here that they that can come before us. It's. It's I'm not sure if it's stated in this one or in the resolution, oh, in 11I. Is it in the resolution? But it is, I read it. It is in I, one I, of... I, I didn't get a chance to read the resolution, so if, if someone can confirm that for me. Because I don't see it in the ordinance. That's if you go to 11I, it is, it is, yeah, in, the the it is in the resolution. Beautiful. And, well, let yeah. me be sure. I thought I read it. Yes, in the I. It is in the I, read right? too. Yes. Okay. It's in the resolution. Should, should, that, should that be part of the ordinance? The commission, uh, Commissioner Diaz Perdona is asking mm -hmm. about the appeal process. <coughs> is there an appeal process? And is it in the ordinance or is it in the, re in the resolution? The resolution. Sh it's sh in the resolution. Sh 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 should that be part of the ordinance, though? Well, if you want a part of the ordinance, you would have to amend the ordinance. <coughs> I mean, amend the, you, uh, when you say amend the ordinance, do you mean amend the ordinance here or do you mean amend the ordinance and republish? You would have to publish, republish it again. The heading. I'm sorry? The, the heading. The heading of the ordinance. But as I say, if it's in re the, the resolution, it's just that's binding. May you have a question? Yes. Uh, Commissioner diaz Perdon, are you? Yeah. Vice Mr. Mayor. Villalobos, you're the attorney of the city, all right? So, <clears throat> Mr. Blanis, <clears throat> normally I like many things that you bring to the table because that's common sense. But I have a question about this in this point. The administration is to keep the numbers, to keep the money comes in, the money comes out, how to pay this, how to pay that. Do not take what you talk about legislation. When the people come here to ask for mitigation, Practically, we are making legislation what, are, what, what is a problem and what is the solution. Now, Mr. Villalobos, uh, I mean, can you, Mr. Villalobos, uh, 
can, can we are, a, I understand that we, the table, the, the commission, we are a quasi-judicial body, right? I'm sorry? We are a quasi-judicial body, right? You are the judicial body. Yeah. And not the judicial body, the quasi legislative legis body. Okay. Now, the manager, the administration, the employees in that department, they don't, right? No, they don't. They, they okay. don't legislate. Now, Mr. Planis, suppose we have a manager now who have a very good common, sound, common sense, and the resident have a problem and comes in front of that manager in this case, could be public works director, other case, but suppose it's the manager. And the manager is one person, she likes the resident. And the, the, uh, the mitigation conversation goes very well. Suppose it's one person, the manager, and one person, the resident. Suppose uh, opposite. The resident and the manager do not uh, like each other. The mitigation conversation would be another one. I think the mitigation should be here in front of the table. If you don't like it, because I don't like it, I feel very bad when the people here come all, sometimes crying. I understand you don't like it and you understand it's heavy. Well, if you don't want it to come to the meeting, don't come. But I think mitigation should be here, uh, transparency in front of the table, in front of everybody, even to the public. I don't think the manager or the public works director, any employee of the city, should be have a private conversation about the mitigation. I do not, I do not, my common sense don't give me that clear to have that position. I think the mitigation should be here in front of all the commissioners, the mayor, and the attorney, and the public. Really, Blanis, I understand that you don't like it, it's very hard, but I think it's no good idea to have a two persons in private to discuss a mitigation. And I, me allows, I ask you your opinion about what I said. Do I am a, right or wrong? That's a very valid opinion. Because that's, I that's, think, that's, I think that's it, why it brings it out to uh, the uh, public hearing. I think. And by the way, let me let me say something. Uh, before, I mean, uh, at some point, we had a first reading and a second reading, and that was it. And it was a good uh, thing that we had. Then, at some point, we developed the three standards. Uh, in other words, these three steps that we would discuss all of this in here before the city attorney is instructed to draft a uh, uh, a uh, an ordinance. And then we have an idea of what to do and what's wrong and so on and so forth because that's a valid point. And uh, Commissioner Blanis' uh, point is very valid. You know, and it's up to you by majority vote to vote the A or nay. But uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, Vice Mayor uh, uh, Suarez has a very valid point. So Mr. Attorney, up that process you just mentioned, isn't it still in place? I'm sorry? The, the process you just said about discussing before requesting an ordinance. Isn't that process still in place? Well, uh, I don't think that this was discussed uh, in the three stage. Uh, that's that's my point. I was just uh, making that point. Uh, that. Uh, so we're, we're not following that process is what you're saying? Or what are you saying? I, what I'm saying, <laughs> we're talking about two things now. I, I, I'm just, I, I heard what things. you said. I didn't. Well, I take it back uh, so we don't uh, mix the uh, orange okay. and apples. You see. Okay. You see, okay. this in particular, this issue in particular, Commissioner Blaney has a very valid point. And Commissioner, the Vice Mayor uh, Suarez has a very valid point. Right. He thinks that it should be right in the open, and Commissioner uh, Blanes thinks that it should be delegated to the administration. So it's up to you to vote the one way or the other. If you're not agreeing with, the commission, with Commissioner Blaney, you should vote no. If you agree with Commissioner Blaney, you, would, you should vote yes. And uh, the uh, 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 Statements by Vice Mayor is a valid statement. Okay, absolutely. Commissioner. Commissioner Suarez, I, I would agree with you. I would agree with everything that you have said, but the fact is that we're not consistent. Every time someone comes here for mitigation, it's black and it's white and it's yellow and it's green and it's red and it's uh, 
It's an open discussion. That's a it's good thing. No, no, yes, it is an open discussion. That should be that way. It is an open discussion, but it's not consistent. Well, according to your concept. It, it is, uh, Commissioner, if, if, every time, if every time that someone would come here and ask for mitigation, and we would be consistent, we would, we would use a certain consistent. guideline, and we would be consistent, which would be the fair, which would be the fair thing to do. Okay, treat everybody the same. But the fact is that that does not happen. We are not consistent, and I want to avoid that. Most cities, most cities, and we should, I, I believe that maybe a survey was done. Most cities, the mayor and the city commission, they stay out of this business of mitigation. It is handled administratively. They have a set of guidelines to go by and they go by those set of guidelines and they are consistent. Do you have the list of the cities? No, the list is not in the packet. Do you don't have the list of the cities? I don't have it. No, it's not in the packet. It's, it's not in the packet. It's not in the pack. I don't see it. Commissioner Blundes was saying a survey. So may I have, you a, point, have, you may I have a point of order, please? Yes, you may, sir. May I have two minutes? Yes, you may. Okay, thank two you. Two minutes. We're going to take a two-minute recess, please.
Once de la noche. Ah, May I have a comment? Uh, Let me open the meeting okay. back up. Meeting back open. Go ahead. There's a difference for, between a fine and a lien. A, the Court Enforcement Board has the legal authority to mitigate lien, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, fines. Fines. However, once it becomes a lien, it has to go before the city commission for the city commission to release the lien and collect some sort of fine. Uh, the issue is that uh, the purpose of court enforcement is not to collect money, but to, uh, to uh, uh, comply with the ordinances, okay? The reason that it cannot have or should not have a set price for everybody is that each case is totally different. As I said, and I read from the statute, the gravity of the violation, action taken to correct violation, etc. So if you said, let's go ahead and collect 10% for everybody, that would not comply with Florida statute. You have to consider each and every case differently, but apply your common sense by majority ruling. As I say, we understand where your predicament is because I talk to lawyers all the time that call me and say, well, let's go ahead and negotiate the price and whatever. There are properties that uh, have accumulated not only here, but also in the county and all over the place, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. There's no way that a judge will rule with you to collect a 10% of the $600,000 fine. No way. I mean, I, I have not seen that at all. So it has to be something reasonable. 
It has to be, uh, for instance, if uh, the, uh, 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 the, the violation has been corrected, whether it's a good faith uh, or uh, simply an oversight or whatever. I understand that uh, you should be responsible for uh, your property, but uh, this is your common sense of what you have to do and what is for you to do. As I said again uh, before, Commissioner Blani has a very valid point, and Commissioner uh, Vice Mayor Suarez has a very valid point. Most cities delegate, not the commission, the commission does not in the city of Miami, Miami-Dade County, if you go out to the Miami-Dade County hearing, you don't see Miami-Dade County Board of County Commissioners mitigating any, f uh, any f uh, fines or any liens, okay? Most of them delegate their authority to a hearing master, like the one that uh, hears the, uh, uh, the uh, red light camera tickets. Uh, this is why the commission does not uh, involve themselves in the, in the um, art of negotiating or uh, uh, deciding what fine are you going to collect from uh, people. So if you want to continue uh, that uh, they come out before the commission like the vice mayor wants, you should vote that way and, you know, he should vote no. If you decide to vote with the... Uh, uh, the rest of the uh, coordinates with uh, Commissioner Blanis, you, you should vote yes. That's it. May well, I have a question for the, for the attorney? Uh, Villalobos, the city of Miami have the, uh, is, a, is a board where you go for mitigation, right? It has a board and it has also a hearing master. The hearing master preside the board, right? No, no, no. It's not one a board. Per one person. One person. One person is a hearing officer. Because like you I have been in Miami. Uh, city of Miami, yes, sir. City of Miami, mitigation liens, and there are five people. Sir, there's a board, city of Miami, board of uh, enforcement board, that mitigates fines, not liens. Lien is different from a fine. A fine is something that you say that you owe a certain amount of money, a lien is when you go out to Miami-Dade County clerk of the uh, board of... Okay, I understand. Okay. Now, the point is this. Do you recommend that the commission should delegate in one person, and in this case propose the manager, to take care of the mitigation? That's your legal recommendation? I pass. It's not my job to... No, 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 no. You are the lawyer of the commission. You are a lawyer of the city. If we have, if I ask you a question, you have to tell me yes or no. You cannot tell me I am limbo. No, sir, because that's uh, something that uh, the commission has to determine. No, no. If one of us asks you a question, yes, you should have an answer. The answer is that I am not a legislator. You are the legislator, and you're I supposed not, to. I, I'm not here to recommend anything, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. You are here to tell because us because I'm to do. telling you that that's not my job. That's well, I job. understand if you give me the job description as a city attorney is to or orientation. If, if orientation the is one thing. But well, in this case, what's your orientation in this case? Giving, you, you recommend your, your orientation is to delegate giving, to the manager? Giving an opinion, uh, Vice Mayor, on something that two commissioner has a diverse idea is not my job. That's your job to vote yes or no. But <laughs> if I have... Thank you, Mr. Attorney. I never seen that you an attorney don't have a, 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 an answer. He just did answer, Commissioner. That's not an answer, Pepe. Yeah. Madam Manager. Um, may I offer a, uh, a a suggestion, Madam Mayor and members of the City Commission, before you call this to a vote, let's do something. Let's do a formal survey. And let's see who has a hearing officer, which is something mm -hmm. that our city attorney just yeah, cool. proffered. And I have heard of cases that where cities do have a mass magistrate, as they call them. Let's see if cities have um, an amount up to a threshold or sets a threshold for the manager's office to mitigate these liens, and which one of them have a, a mitigation process before the commission. Let's do a survey. Don't kill the item. 
I gave thought us, Commissioner Blonde said we already did. That's all right. We we called several cities. I myself called several cities. Uh, Gotti called a couple of cities, but we don't have a survey, a formal survey. However, this is an important issue, and it deals with mitigation of liens against properties, and I know that these cases that come before you can become difficult, can become emotional for the person who's up here uh, requesting it. I know it involves attorney. So before you either call a vote or kill it or pass it in a way, I propose we do then a formal survey of all municipalities in Miami-Dade County that are similar to size like ours. And I know the county and the city of Miami, they do have hearing officers. The manager has certain authority. Let's see what those, where those authorities lie. And let's come back and give you a, a, a complete survey on that. I agree with Is that. Is that the will of the commission? Uh, not for me. I mean, you know, that's not, that's not going to change my uh, my vote. I don't. I don't. I don't well, really care what anyone else is doing. Well, then I would suggest if it doesn't doing, change your vote, uh, I, Commissioner. I just, I just don't think that we should be in the business of mitigating, you know, uh, liens. I think it should be handled administratively, or by an administrative hearing officer, or whatever. But we should not be doing that. I don't think. I don't think there's many mayor and, and, and city commissions that do this. Well, what the manager is saying is just going to provide us with the information as oh, to who oh, is doing oh, it that okay. way. So uh, we I, have, I, I'm fine. I guess the survey you mentioned would uh, be what she's I, going to do now. I, I don't agree, but I, I guess the majority does agree, so I'm going to have to go along with it. Well, I, I'll tell you where I stand on this just to clarify. Will you stand on what? On, what on the manager is recommending? Both, or both, will you stand on? Both. It's, it's tight and it's very short. Um, it, I, I think they're both right. I think that we the, this board usually goes with recommendation of, of the of the administration anyways on mitigation. When I'm, from what I've seen in the audience, um, I think that it's probably better for uh, most people who come from mitigation to do with their administration just because it's faster. Um, because we usually go with with, um, with administration recommendation, I do agree with the vice mayor that you could have a situation. I mean, hypothetically, down the line, where where the manager, let's say, doesn't like somebody or 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 like somebody, um, and I'm not saying this manager. I'm saying down the mm -hmm. other road, um, where they they get difference and they get a difference in uh, in their mitigation. I I'm more scared of somebody getting um, somebody they don't like getting a, a higher mitigation amount, but that's contemplated by an appeals process that comes back to us. So that that. Honestly, that, that concern is called for me. The only thing, I guess, would be whether it's a city manager or a hearing officer, I guess that first step. So if, I mean, if everyone wants to get, get a survey and see who, want, who wants to do with the city manager or the hearing officer, that's where I, that's where I stand. I mean, that, that's what I would be in favor of. Well, if this ordinance goes forward as is, it right. is the city manager. No, I understand that. So if we wanted to, to consider a magistrate versus a manager, we would have to have right. the manager do as she recommended right. and, and give us some more information. And, and, and the magistrate comes at a price, obviously, so we would have to put in an application fee that would help us or assist us in recovering any expenses right, with the magistrate. I, I wouldn't get ahead of yourself because we might not even find that. We might not even find the need for a hearing officer from, right. you know, standard protocol. If we were to... Let me, uh, if I may, yes, about, go ahead. Uh, comment mm -hmm. what the manager just said. Uh, paragraph 10, print A, of uh, the uh, procedure that I drafted, it says city manager consideration. A party seeking to have his or her mitigation of a code enforcement lien must submit a written application to the city manager, as well as an application fee of blank. So I already had thought about that. Okay. That's what I've been asking for for some time. And that's yes, why it? I had it. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been asking for this for quite some time, so thank you for, for incorporating that into this. First of all, the order of the agenda is this. We have a, uh, an ordinance right now. But Mr. Chairman, you're jumping on to 11-9. If we're we? going to change Let's the ordinance, we will have to republish whatever uh, ordinance you want to uh, review next time around, okay? 
That's number one. If you're going to vote, it has to be voted now. As is. And it will end or die. And if you want to table it to the report of the manager, it will have to come to another day. Do we but have to republish meantime, if we table it? It's not tabling, it's a continuation you of can the public continue, hearing. Continue okay. the we public wouldn't hearing. have to republish. Correct. I'm, Correct. I'm corrected. Okay. But in the meantime, you have people just like the, that lady over there that needs to come before you that have been waiting for us to make up our minds because she does have a real issue on her hands. Okay? Okay. And uh, she does have to apply for a mitigation hearing either before you or before the manager or somebody because she does have a problem and that she has been waiting for a couple of months for us to make up our minds. So, uh, I see. If you uh, decide to uh, set it for another day, uh, she will request a hearing before the city commission so uh, she ends up her uh, plight and uh, come before you, okay? Okay, so. Like all the people that have been also been waiting, we have a couple of attorneys that have been on my back on, on this issue. They're waiting to see who they're to come before. Okay, yes. so, again, we don't have to republish if we continue it. We would it be a continuance. So it's time certain. If we go with the manager's suggestion to provide us with more information as to how different cities. Yes, Commissioner. Okay, so we would have to re-advertise uh, no. if... No, no, we no. don't have to re-advertise it. We have to re-advertise it or we change our minds as to no, what no, we're no. going to do. Okay. We would, okay. It'll be a continuance if we allow the manager time to to survey Make it at least. other cities. Okay. And pre right. present us with more information. Okay. I mean, that can't hurt to have more information before. Right, okay. the list is the cities. Right? Is the table, okay. in, is there anyone opposed to a continuance of this item to allow the manager time to? No, I just want to make sure that what the survey has to do is, is getting not only whether they have administrative uh, lien mitigation, but also who does the, administra the administrative lien mitigation. Whether it's a magistrate, Correct. whether it's commission, whether it's the manager's office or his or her designee, um, we, we would do a, a more complete survey if you would. Now, I would ask that we give us ourselves a little bit of time, and we're probably talking about 45 days because we depend on the response from each manager, each clerk's office, or each code enforcement officer. If, this, if it were up to us, I could assign somebody to doing <clears throat> the survey or do it myself and prioritize it, but sometimes the answer is not so easily available as it may be with us. Understood. Some cities, you have to jump through hoops to get to the right department. Do, do we have to set a date on, on when this comes back? Yes. As yes. a continuation right Continue now? Yes. Continue to a date and time to And right if I may, because again, we're the clock is ticking in terms of we, there's just no possible way we could have it for the next meeting. Yeah. No, uh, for June 19th, the second no. meeting of June. Second meeting of June, June 19th yes. would be the earliest. Okay, in That's the fine. meantime, in the meantime, I have uh, been formally asked by the attorney for this lady to request a hearing before the, uh, count the city commission if the city commission does not pass this uh, uh, ordinance this afternoon. So that we be following our current So procedure. we will have uh, her hearing on the f next following- uh, On June 5th. Okay. City commission. Yes, sir. June 6th is the next June city commission. June 5th. 5th, 5? Yes. Okay. So you'll be here on June 5th. What's five. your name? What's the name of the lady? I'm sorry? Let me open the public no, no, hearing and you. close she it and then we'll afterwards. continue with that. So. Um, there was no opposition. Everyone is in agreement. Given the, the continue, so Madam Clerk, we so you will need a motion. Open the public I will hearing open the public and hearing. continue. Public hearing is now open. Is there anyone to speak on this item? And you continue then the public hearing until a uh, date and time certain of June 19, 2019. Public now, hearing let me, continues. Let me clarify this for the record, and so everybody understands it. Next time that we come here on this particular item. If there's any changes or there's any willingness to change, we will have to re-advertise. We don't have to re-advertise this because we're putting it for uh, discussion on next time, uh, next uh, uh, date uh, certain. But if we change it, 
we will have to re-advertise it. Is Understood. that correct? Understood. Is that clear? Does everyone yes. understand that? Yes. yes? Okay. Very well. Okay. Um, close the pub public hearing. No, we continued it. You continue the public hearing. Do, well, uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, do we need a motion and second to continue the public hearing? Until yes. The date and yes. time certain? Yes. Motion. We need mo motion. Motion by Commissioner Blanes. Second. Second by uh, Commissioner Eric Diaz Patron. So on the motion to continue, uh, Commissioner Blanca has your yes. vote. Commissioner Blanes? Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron? Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez? Yes. Mayor Rodriguez? Yes. Vice Mayor. Thank you. You, uh, Ms. who will contact the resident for, or did you know yeah, already she will, coming? She will, she ha they actually have requested officially from me, okay. her attorney, so Perfect. I get uh, together with the clerk so she, she can be on the uh, next Good. agenda. Good, okay, thank okay. you, Mr. Attorney. Okay, next, name next so item next is item 11E. This is a first reading. An ordinance of the City of West Miami amending ordinance 2008-03, deleting chapter 15, article uh, 3, section 1551, amending chapter 15. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Amending chapter 50, uh, 50, 51, amending chapter 15, 15, article 3, section 1552, authorizing city administration to have the option of contracting for water services directly with property owners or with tenants renting from property owners, imposing a deposit for water service upon real property located in the city of West Miami, providing for codification, providing for serverability, and providing for an effective date. This item is sponsored by Commissioner Blanes, and this is a phase one. First and reading, phase no two. discussion. Phase two, yeah, no discussion. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Commissioner Blanca, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron? Yes. Commissioner Planes? Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez? Yes. Mayor Rodriguez? Yes. 5 0. Item passes, and this will be advertised, published. I think we have time for June 5th since we have like uh, a week. Uh, sometimes it's better. Thank you. 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 Yeah, I have, I have time. So that's when it happens between the first and the, and right. the third week is different. June 5th, June 5th we would is, recommend. Um, the um, public decided. hearing and second uh, reading of the ordinance. Madam Clerk, if I may, I just want to make a comment. Sure. I, I'm going to urge the table before the next meeting to actually read the ordinance so you can have all your questions ready for the, sec you know, for the second reading. You literally read the, read the ordinance so you understand exactly what's, what um, what's going to take place. Okay, proceed, please. Okay. Next item is item 11F. This is a first reading ordinance of the city of West Miami, Florida, creating chapter entitled Abandoned Real and Commercial Property to include but not be limited to providing for purpose and intent, providing for definitions, providing for notification procedures, providing for regulations of abandoned real real and commercial properties, providing for the registration of abandoned real property, providing for maintenance and inspection requirements, providing for security requirements, and providing for penalties, providing for enforcement, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, providing for serverability, providing for an effective date. This item is sponsored by Mayor Rodriguez. First reading, no discussion. Motion. Second. Yes, and, and again, this, uh, the second reading and public hearing will be advertised for June 5th, 2019 at 7.30. We have a motion. We have a second on the motion. Commissioner Blanca, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron? Yes. Commissioner Blanes? Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez? Yes. Mayor Rodriguez? Yes. 5-0. Item passes. Uh, Madam Clerk, I have a question yes. uh, from you. When yes. do you have to uh, advertise for that, uh, submit the advertising to the papers uh, for this? The requirement for, for an ordinance is 10 days okay. prior to the, the public hearing. So based on this, I... Before the end of the week? Yes, before the end of this week. Let me check that. I would respectfully request uh, from the City Commission okay. that if you have a priest review the heading again, if you have any changes, let us know so we can change it and publish 
the adequate, uh, uh, the correct uh, uh, heading on the papers, okay? Yes. It, it ha if I may, yes, please. As I recall it from my clerking days, um, the ordinance must be advertised the way it is read on a first, on the reading. first reading. Yes. The reason that I mention this is that if you decide to change anything, it would have to go to a first reading again. Okay. If you decide to change it, it would have to go to a first hearing again. We have to advertise the way that we uh, we have the. Uh, the heading of the ordinance. But it changes a substantial part, right? Change a substantial part of it. If you change the heading, change the heading. Okay, you have to rehear it on the first reading again. Yeah. Very well. Okay. June fifth, twenty nineteen, so that the clerk can properly advertise. Next item, item yes, eleven G. This is a first reading, an ordinance I, of the mayor. I would draw this item till I can uh, meet with the uh, city attorney and, uh, and confer uh, once again. Item G. G. Mr. Attorney. It's okay. Should we read the item? Is the request to withdraw the item? So. There's no vote on that. No vote on that, so item withdrawn. Thank you, Commissioner. Until further notice. Next item will be item 11H. This is a resolution of the mayor and the city commission of the city of West Miami authorizing the city manager the expenditure of $18,393.63 payable to Environmental Products Florida in connection to the needed repairs to the city's vector truck, providing for effective date, mayor and city commission. Madam Mayor, if I may yield to uh, Mr. Pena uh, to talk to you about the condition of the vehicle, the age of the vehicle, and the repair needs, and then I'll talk to you about the funding mechanism, if possible. Yes, please, Mr. Pena. Thank you. Madam Mayor, you could briefly tell me what a vector truck is? That would be helpful. I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> the vector truck is one of the, the pieces of equipment that we use to clean storm drains and sewer clogs when we have clogs in our sewer system. Uh, and water the circles. It's vacuum. A, it's a big uh, vacuum cleaner. Uh, we bought it in 1997. It is 22 years old now. The chassis is in magnificent sh shape, but however, the body over time has taken its uh, toll. Uh, like I said, it's 22 years old. Uh, it's constantly breaking down, so we took it to back to the one of the authorized dealers in Broward, and uh, in order to get it back into shape and uh, reliable for the next five to ten years, we need to spend eighteen thousand dollars, three hundred ninety-three dollars, to bring it up to date. It has several items that need to be replaced. The, the big orange reel on the front carries a big hose that's four hundred feet long, that has several uh, brakes in it. Uh, the reel that actually holds that also has a bushing that's leaking a lot of water that needs to be replaced. So the whole thing needs to be taken apart. The actual wiring system to the to the actual body needs to be replaced also, in order because of the time of the, and age of the vehicle. The wires are very brittle. We're losing a lot of components. What's the cost of a new truck, Mr. Pena? Three about three hundred thousand. We paid one hundred and seventy-seven when we bought it. And when did you say was the last time we had to repair repair this to this? Magnitude? We've never repaired. We've never. This never. is the first repair. Yeah. That's right. And this should last another five to ten years. You said Correct. these repairs. Uh, we only have six thousand dollars in our budget as a maintenance account, so the rest of it has to come from somewhere else. Where is it coming from? Well, we're going to have to take it from reserves. However, I'd like the record to reflect that we have reserves in the stormwater because you have the the Im the worth of the infrastructure. However, you have a day-to-day -day operating deficit in the stormwater uh, enterprise fund. So at some point in time, we're going to need to readdress this. Um, you can charge reserves and you're still gonna show a big surplus, but this is only gonna add to your operating deficit. It's a cash deficit, if you would. 
But this is not a matter of if we have to fix it. We, we have, have to no fix choice. It. We, we, we cannot be no without choice. this truck. Sure. I'm sorry? We only have one unit. One and unit, and we the can't be without it. So it's right. not a matter of right. So you know, it's optional. Yes, it, uh, this is a this is a must. Okay, I have a question. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, so, Pena, according with the manager, we have the money. To, we have the. Operating. We have you have, and, and she has. So we have the money. The we'll point is it. this. The point that the point is coming. This we are in is in May. Soon is coming the hurricane season. It starts. And today. many, many cities like us have trucks, have equipment for the for the hurricane season that have to be repaired, have to be remodeled. So first come, first serves. That's so correct. we already have the money. We should go as sooner as possible. The truck is before up there another, on us. Before another cities goes ahead of us because then they tell you they need we need 60 days when we never know correct okay anything any other questions comments concerns motion i make a motion you make a motion I yeah, second. That I second. The, man the manager oh. has something second as soon as possible after the vote i just wanted to find out how long it would take for the repairs when we should see the truck back uh, would it, it's in line waiting for service, so I would imagine within two to three weeks we'll have it back. Perfect. Okay, so Ma Madam Clerk, you have several motions and several seconds. Uh, you have to yeah, figure this no, out. No, we have commission, uh, Commissioner Blanes uh, made a motion, second by Vice Mayor Suarez. Uh, on the motion, Commissioner Blanca, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron? Yes. Commissioner Blanes? Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez? Yes. Mayor Rodriguez? Yes. 5 0. Item passes. Next and, item. Uh, Madam Mayor, since this item is in connection, was in connection with item 11D, yeah, I think we should continue this uh, this item until the June 19th uh, meeting. You're referring to uh, to item to I. the resolution to yes. item I 11I. Actually, I don't. I think it stands on itself I, yeah. I, alone. It's a process Mr. for the application. Okay. And the would you recommend to entertain the resolution right now instead of uh, of uh, tying the resolution to the ordinance that was continued until June 19th? The resolution on the uh, procedure. Yes. If we're going to change the the uh, heading, the uh, the original ordinance. I think that we should uh, continue the uh, resolution as well. Very well. Continued resolution as well. Okay, can we just Is there anyone one? opposed to this? Yeah. No, no. So we need a, do we need a motion can to continue motion the resolution? I'm sorry? Motion. Or to defer the item. Okay, motion by Commissioner Su uh, Vice Mayor Suarez. Second. Second by Commissioner, Commissioner Diaz Patron. Mm -hmm. And on the motion, Commissioner Blanes, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Diaz Patron. Yes. Vice Mayor Suarez. Yes. Mayor Rodriguez. Yes. Five zero. Item deferred until June 19th. Next item. Item 12, consent agenda items. None this evening. We have the, we had the request for, for proclamation, which was approved for Sylvania. Uh, item 13, good of the order. Anything for good of the order? No? Good night. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Uh, oh, no. Sorry, good of the order. Uh, yes, if you uh, allow us to uh, advertise uh, Sylvania's uh, uh, celebration on at their campus, I believe it's the 23rd. Saturday, May 18th. This is the Saturday, the 18th. Their flyer on our website so that they can get more exposure. I, Madam Manager? I don't see why not. It is our, our, our municipal public school. Is there any, is anyone on the table opposed to that? No opposition? So be it. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? All right. Favor. Adjourn. Meaning adjourned. It's 9:36. Aye.